Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me. I'm going to be starting on uh, just another project on a large scale piece. It's going to be, uh, these are six foot long and three foot wide, and I'm going to do uh, two of them. And I'll be working on them together, but I'm trying something different with an underpainting that's made up of a lot of collage material because in our pro membership, we've been working on a lot of different things like focusing on line and then focusing on color, focusing on shape. And I've asked all my students to put aside some of those papers that they've been working on with the hope that they would make discoveries of you know, what their favorite types of things are, depending on what the element that we're looking at is about. So I thought um, one of those things that we're also working on is how to kind of eliminate fear and procrastination and bring back a lot of fun into our studio. How do we do that? Well, looking at a board like this is not exactly the best thing to eliminate fear. So I'm gonna be starting out with a lot of collage material. Some of it is um, painted and some of it is not, but it comes from just, just about anything I could find from um, old junk mail to old wedding invitations or letters, envelopes, um, receipts, invoices, book pages, music, kind of a little bit of everything. You know, the thing about these is that they're obviously rectangular and I do love geometry. So if I were to put these kind of in some sort of an order, for example, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying I will do this, but if I did do this, Part of what I'm going to be doing here after I put down this under layer of collage material is I'm going to be painting over it, obviously, and then sanding back and adding more paint and sanding back and more collage, and it's kind of like a lot of things. But you can see if I start to line things up, that when I sand things back, I'm almost automatically going to get some kind of a grid. And I kind of like that idea, So, um, but this is thicker paper, so the question is, do I put this down and... I may start with just book covers, just for the heck of it, because they are all the same thickness, and I have quite a few. I don't know if I have enough for both boards, but um, yeah, and I'm not, there's no, like, no color. Um, I'm not working on any specific color palette. For me, it's just um, a mishmash of things, and some of these things have holes punched out of them. That's kind of fun as well. So I'm just going to put it down like this. Spread it around. And since I've got, I might as well start at the edge so I can kind of line up some of these book covers and see what happens. See how well they stick. I've got a lot of area to cover. That's the thing. Um, and I'm not working on the wall just because this is so drippy. So I'm just gonna go all the way to the edge and see if that's gonna be enough. Start with this bright blue up here. I might actually need to use more of a gel for these book covers because, because they're thicker. And if they're thicker, they're going to need a little bit more oomph to get them to stick. So I'm going to put this up in the corner and put some on this side as well. So one of the reasons I'm starting out this way, aside from it being a great way to start out with without any fear, without any procrastination, is because what I love in the whole painting process is the element of surprise. I like not knowing, you know, what I'm going to see when I sand back, for example. Sometimes I plan my palette and other times I don't. So now um, that's better. Um, this probably would need a little bit of help in terms of keeping that corner down. But if anything doesn't stick, I can always come back, back in later and uh, help that along. But sometimes it's just a matter of getting it to initially, um, you just have to hold it for a second. So yeah, I've got a lot of these book covers and let's just see how that goes. Just gonna wish that underneath. Just spray over that now and then just to make sure it's cooperating. Okay, so I can always just dip this in water too um, in the meantime. This guy, now I've taken it's just one layer now of this um, green and white, 
and maybe I'll stick it in there. This is going to be, um, now that I've gotten this brush all full of it, add a little bit of this too just for the liquid. Okay. I'm going to be overlapping a lot of these, but for now I'm just going to put a single layer down first and then do another layer. So here's just a, the back side of an envelope. Not too thrilling on that one. It's a great way to recycle stuff, I think, instead of just using paint, which I will be using later, but um, I'm basically recycling a lot of stuff that I would have normally thrown out. And that's kind of nice right now. It's good to have a garbage can nearby, that's for sure. Okay, so this is super thin. Let's take this over here. little bit aware of what I've got open and what I don't have open. And this panel is so much easier to work on flat rather than on the wall, so that's why I've decided to do that. Um, maybe I'll try another book cover. These guys are so thick that it's kind of good to put it on both sides. And I'm sure you're wondering about, you know, those things I'm using are not acid free, they're not archival. And I, you know, normally I, I'm always very careful about things like that, but I feel like the, the, the climate we're in right now, the, um, the world we live in right now, and I, I do use high quality paints and things like that. And you know, usually high quality acrylic polymer mediums, but these are the lower layers. And um, I have discussed this with um, art companies. And even if the, um, the papers and things break down, what doesn't really necessarily break down is the ink. I've marked some of these tissue papers just so I can, I've got some that are wet strength some that are acid free and some that are just regular like wrapping tissue and there is a difference. This wet strength just it's really tough stuff and I like that. It's very cool. I can imagine doing an entire underpainting with just the wet strength. It's very cool. All right now these book covers are a little harder to get to lay down flat but you just have to be aware that um, you've got to push them down a little bit with your brayer. And I just love all the colors and the text. Like I love text and all that stuff. So let's see here. Place for some red. everything in squeeze bottles because it's just so much easier and faster. Here's some rice paper. It just has some circles on it. You can see here. And it's very thin. Doesn't need a lot of medium.
really encourage you just to have fun with this and don't think too hard, don't think at all. Yeah, don't think at all. This is definitely play. And you know, if you've got, if you're incorporating things that have a lot of meaning to you, then um, that's really great because as you start to excavate and, and go into these layers, you're gonna reveal things that have meaning to you. So that whole thing of, well, why are you covering everything up? The reason for that is the element of surprise. I mean, how great is that to be surprised? It's like when you open up a kiln, if you're a ceramic artist and you open up your kiln and you don't know what to expect, um, it's just like Christmas every time you come into your studio. And it's really great to have something you started the day before and then when you come in the next day, you're like really excited to see, you know, what am I gonna do next? And especially if you have this kind of experimental attitude. And I'll be just continuing on with this very playful um, attitude as I go through the whole painting. You'll see that the whole thing can be a lot of fun. The decision making and the thinking doesn't have to happen for a pretty long time. And if you really know abstract composition, then you don't have to wait for your gems to appear. You can actually put them in yourself. That's something that we never talked about in my online course, Powerful Design Personal Color, but it's something that I'll be demonstrating, you know, probably again and again over time as I work large like this. All right, so continuing to overlap. This is a cool polka dot here. See? Here's my polka dots. More rice paper. I do really like the rice paper. Uh, what else do I have? I have a nice brown. This is also like a rice paper, and the rice papers, uh, whether they're Thai Kozo or whatever they are, they have really strong fibers, but they're very thin. So I've got a dark area here with the book cover. Just out of the corner of my eye, I kind of notice it, so I'm going to stick this here. I like that dark. I love that pattern right there. I think I'll put another one. Maybe I'll put another red one down here. I love the color red. So red is always welcome. Put this one down. This one actually has some green. Why not? that off actually. I think once it gets wet enough it'll lay down a little bit more. So I'll give it some time to soak and then come back. for something a little smaller. All kinds of things in here. I've got maps, yellowed phone pages. You can go over the edge if you want to. You can like wrap it over the edge if you've got a cradle panel, but in this case I've got tape there, so that wouldn't really be so good. this. 